guys, this is Teresa from Simply Made Fun, and today we're going to talk about opening a file in your Silhouette software, how to trace the file to get it ready to cut, how to customize the file with different colors and patterns, and then how to cut by color in your software. Um, to start out, I need to tell you that I use the business edition of the Silhouette software. Um, I love it because I can cut by color. You can't, I don't believe you can do that with any of the other versions. So if cut by color is something that's important to you, you do need the business edition of your software. The file we're going to use today is a free 4th of July Firecracker SVG that's available on my blog. I'll put the link to the blog post in the description. That way you guys can head there and grab the file for yourselves. Let's get started. So come over to file and hit open. And then look for your 4th of July um, file and open it. And it pops up in your software. Super easy. So if you try to come over to send from here, nothing is going to happen. There are going to be no cut lines, nothing. Um, you always have to trace your file before you send it to cut. So what we're going to do is come over to our toolbar and open the trace panel. Up at the top you'll see there are three different types of um, options for tracing. The first one is just the trace area, and this is the one I use 98% of the time. And I just find it really easy. It usually does whatever I need it to do, so I don't really venture off and try to use the other two as much. But let me show you. So if you come over here, you just draw a box around your file, and then it reads your file and says, okay, this is where I'm gonna cut, and that's what the yellow is. That's where your machine will cut. Really easy. Um, for this file, that that's really all you need, but let's go over the other two. So this is Trace by Color, where you would just use a little eyedropper tool, and it will um, do the same thing. It'll fill everything with yellow. But as you can see, it kind of has weird edges on some of the letters. So not my favorite one to use. The box, I feel like, did a better job. Um, also, I don't think this is, there we go. Um, so you can use it. It's definitely there if you want it. But it is not my favorite one to use either. I usually like using it if the files that I'm opening aren't colored black because if you have files that have light colors like a light blue or a light pink or something like that the software always has a really hard time trying to read those colors so the eyedropper tool would definitely come in handy for that okay then we have the magnetic trace and I was playing around with this earlier and I don't like it for this file at all I actually don't ever see myself using this because it, I, I just don't see a point. Um, but let me show you. So, yeah, you have to be really precise when you draw. I am not precise, so I would not use that. Um, my favorite, I'll go back to just the regular trace and we'll draw a box. And it looks like everything is lined up correctly, everything looks good. Um, but even with that, let's just talk about the different options that you have in the trace area. So you can come to outline where it just shows you, you know, like a, a yellow outline on the edge of your design. Um, either like solid fill or outline doesn't really matter. Um, it's more personal preference. I just typically use solid fill because it's the first one that comes up and I just really don't worry about trying to change it. Um, and then you come down in here and you see threshold. Now it's not going to do that, do it with this file, but usually if you take it all the way up to 100, it'll fill the entire box with yellow. Um, it can't differentiate between the 
I usually, um, if it's like a more complicated design, it won't differentiate between like the design and I guess the whole area. So it just fills the whole box. You don't want that. If you go too low on threshold, on threshold, it doesn't trace anything. So I like to keep it between 45 and 50 for the most part, and it works really well. Um, to speckle threshold, same thing. If you go up too high, it doesn't give you anything. Um, so I usually keep that pretty low. And then for high pass and low pass, if you have a really intricate design, high pass works really, really well to pick up all those little areas that your machine needs to cut. So I would play around with these if you're using a more complicated design, um, just to kind of see what works best. And then for your scale, I always keep mine at 10. I, I don't think I've ever moved it. Um, so I can't really speak on that, but it usually works fine. The main thing you want to do when you go into trace is make sure that it, like it's the perfect trace because if, if it's not reading the design correctly, your lines could end up jagged. They're not going to be straight. Your design's going to look a little weird. So you really want to make sure that everything is perfect before you hit trace. And then we'll just move that over there. And then we have the little firecracker file. If you go to send, you'll see the cut lines. Oh, I have had no cut done, but you'll see the cut lines um, and it'll be all ready to go. So if you're only doing a one color design, this is where you stop. You just send it to your machine and you're ready to go. If you want to get a little more complicated, you're gonna go back to design and come over here and release compound path. And then what I like to do, because I'm, we're not messing with the letters at all, I'm gonna make those a compound path again and move it over. And then as you can, if you, select this entire thing, you'll see all the different boxes. And you're gonna move all of those pieces away from your, um, away from each other. That way you can color them and play with them and see what you like and what you don't like. Okay, so this is gonna be your background. I'm gonna make mine black. And then for the color portion of your rocket or firecracker, um, I'm gonna make that red, I think. I'm gonna keep it, keep it red. Okay, then your little burst at the bottom, I'm gonna make that orange. And then all of my stars, I'm gonna make blue. Okay. And then you can slowly start to move everything back. Make sure it's all lined up pretty well. There you go. And then I'm gonna group all of the stars together just to make it easier. And bring them over. And then bring your little sonic boom over. I don't really know what to call it, so I'm just gonna call it a sonic boom. And then this piece, you actually don't need it. So just delete that. And then you have this whole thing ready. So select all of the pieces and move it over and then you can bring your little firecracker um, or your phrase back over and line everything up. Then you are 
ready to go. Um, so I like doing this because then I can see what colors are going to look best together. These are not my favorite colors, but they'll work for right now, um, just for display purposes. Um, but if you're going to cut by color, then what you'll do is come over to send and you'll see you have four different types. You can do simple, line, fill, or layer. Simple means you're just cutting everything at once, which is what you use if you're doing a one color design. Line, um, line is great if everything that you've made has a different color line around it. I did not do that, so it's not giving me all the options that I need, which is why fill is my favorite. Um, if you uncheck all of these, the nothing, no cut lines come up on your file. So if you go one by one, you'll see if I click black, all of the black is outlined and ready to cut. If I click orange, my orange is ready to cut. Same with red and then same with blue. So this one is my favorite just for that fact. Like I just find it much easier. Um, plus I tend to fill the layers. I don't always go back and recolor the lines. Um, around the objects, so fill just works better for me. You also have layer, but there's only one layer, so doesn't really work that great. Um, so this is, I, I tend to use fill. Now again, I have the business edition of the software, which makes it easier to be able to do this. Um, and I will also put a link to Swing Design where you can get the business edition for your software and it's on sale right now. So I really like it just because I do like to do a lot of files that have multiple colors. It just makes it easier for me, but it's not a necessity. You can still cut with multiple layers without it. It just takes a little more time. Um, and to be able to do that, all I would do is just move each piece and be like, okay, let's just cut red and then I'll move all this off and it'll only cut the red. So it would be under simple. Then it would only cut the red and then you'd have to go in and do each piece like that. Um, again, it works depending on what you want to do. Either one is fine. But I just, I personally like being able to cut by color. But anyway, let's go back. And then once you have all of that ready to go, you just go to send and make sure you have your cut settings right and then mine it's not hooked up to my cameo, but then you would hit send. Um, it's super simple. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And yeah, that's how you open, you trace, um, you customize, and then send to cut for silhouette files. Um, you can do this with SVG, or PNG, those are the two that I like the most. Um, I highly suggest using SVG files if you can. So if you have any questions, just let me know, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks.